I'm Lynn Smith, and welcome to Bigfoot Case Files. Hi. Three years ago, I was staying with family on a country property outside of Chelsea, Ontario. It's a rural property, just farms and country properties on large acreages. We were just getting a campfire going when I walked off around some bushes and small trees to take a leak. The farm next door has sheep, and every night during the summer, the owner lights his property up on all sides with powerful spotlights, even though the sheep are put in a very well-built barn every night. The spotlight shining in the back field lights up the entire field right to the wood line, approximately 80 to 100 yards away. As I was doing my thing, I noticed someone walking through waist-high brush 40 feet away from me. The figure was clear to make out as it was walking between the two properties, keeping to the edge of the spotlight's reach. I thought we had a trespasser, as it was clear the figure was trying to keep quiet as it walked through the tall grass, lifting its knees very high and looked to be trying to be careful where it put its feet. I was just about to yell at this guy, until I saw how long the arms were and the bizarre shape to the head, very cone-like or wearing a weird hat. That made me pause, but as it was now fully in the open, walking on mowed grass, I thought, let this guy know you see him. But before I could say anything, this thing began to run towards the wood line. After three strides, I knew this wasn't a person. The speed was inhuman, the arms pumping as it got to a speed I don't think a human can imitate. The back-and-forth motion was a full 180 degrees. In the open, the head was easy to see. It looked too big for the thin body. I guess it would be 6 foot 6, 200 plus pounds. As it sprinted to the tree line, it began to move more into the spotlight shine. I could clearly see this thing's arms and legs pumping. It was practically a blur. As it neared the tree line, I thought it tripped. It leapt forward, arms straight down at its sides, chest now parallel to the ground. But before it crashed to the ground, its arms came forward, then took two strides like a dog would on all fours, and was gone into the bush. At first I thought it tripped, but now I believe it did this on purpose. When I think back, it was like a showboating move, diving out at full speed, arms straight out at its side, then catching itself at the last second, and running off on all fours, as fast or faster than on two feet. The one thing with what I saw that messes me up, this thing covered that 80 to 100 yards in 4 to 5 seconds. It's like my brain doesn't know what to do with what I saw. My brain doesn't know where to file this or how to explain. This plays over in my head weekly. I still dream about it. Guess because I really can't explain what I saw or what I saw isn't supposed to exist. Hi. I live on the Navajo Reservation in Arizona on the New Mexico border. I have come across numerous tracks, small and big, and somewhat know where they travel at night. I live at the bottom of a ridgeline that travels from the north to the south. Usually you can spot this creature in the early mornings, walking back and forth on the ridgeline. The only reason I got to find out was a surveyor was out measuring our property and told us he spotted one on the ridge early morning back in 2013. I've spotted them behind the corral in the early mornings at about 4 a.m. There were three of them standing in the field near the corner post of the property. So my dog and I hid behind a tree and just watched these things stand there. They were just looking in our direction, and I'm figuring that when they saw us, one of them decided to get on all fours and army crawl towards us. The only reason I was able to see them was because it had snowed that week, and everywhere was white, and these things stood out big time. So needless to say, me and my dog got out of there. We usually hear this thing in the night yelling or howling with the coyotes, but you have to catch him when he does it. My wife and her mom tend to get the most sounds out of them because when they cut across to the other house, usually it will start making noise when they're walking across. I've given him food when the lambs die in the winter or when coyotes get too close to the house. One time when I got into shed hunting, I could not find any due to me not knowing where to start. So one day, I heard someone talking about how they're always watching you. So I decided to go out and I yelled, Hey brother, they say you're my brother and always watching. So I've been feeding you for some time now, so I want a deer antler in return for my deeds. A week later, we went back, and sure enough, there was a deer skull with the antlers still attached to it, right where we left its food. Then one early morning, we found footprints all around the house. It seemed to be looking in each window. 
So that got me mad, and I went back in the woods, and I told this thing that he broke the rules, and if he ever came around my house, I will shoot him. And for him breaking the rules, I will no longer feed him. For two winters, it didn't move on until this year. For some reason, it moved on finally. I'm thinking maybe because its young one got old enough not to be a bother and can travel on its own. I don't know, but I know my uncles down south are being harassed by this creature, coming up, breaking their fences, and screaming at their windows. My cousin, who's near 50 years old, slept under his bed because he was scared of the screaming. Also, the family saw one about 15 feet tall, based on the height of the tree it was standing by. One time, during a rainy day, my family of six saw one also. We were camping in a tent about 25 miles into the wilderness towards a Boundary Waters canoe area entry point. The first day we got to the campsite, we set up camp, and it was about two in the afternoon. We thought we'd go down to the canoe launch and toss a bobber in the lake to see if we could get a fish for dinner. We'd been sitting on the shoreline, quietly enjoying the early June sun. Our dog was sleeping between us. There was a peninsula that was about 150 to maybe 200 feet directly across the lagoon we were fishing in. All of a sudden, we heard brush moving on that peninsula, and this giant thing stands up and starts walking down a slight hill towards the mainland. It was huge. I remember the giant shoulders, and I could see that the chest was thick. I could see the head, and it was all furry and slightly pointed at the top. It sauntered different than anything I'd ever seen and was not a man or a bear. I could only see it from the waist up, but I know this thing was at least eight feet tall. It was huge in the chest and arms. It was a reddish-brown and very hairy. We were looking at each other and whispered at the same time, What the hell was that? We reeled in our lines as quickly as we could and rushed back to camp. The dog did not react at all and was very quiet. We talked back and forth for about a half hour and decided to go back to see if it was still there or if anyone at the Outfitters had seen or heard anything from anyone else. They looked at us like we were weird. We walked over to where the entry is by the Outfitters as there's a road that goes along the lagoon and towards the peninsula. On that road, there were four cabins that they used to rent out all year long. Those were boarded up and there were barricades with no trespassing signs everywhere. Why in the middle of the woods would this happen? They were never boarded up that way in all the years I've been there. Without any luck with that endeavor, we went back to camp to have dinner. The entire time, we kept talking about what we saw. Nightfall came, and we got into the tent finally, around 9 p.m. We were both restless and just laid there. We'd been in the tent for about half hour or so, when all of a sudden we heard something ginormous moving through the forest behind our tent. Large sticks about two inches in diameter, were being snapped off trees, and we could tell it was approaching the camp. Then it stopped. All of a sudden, we heard a low growl that escalated into a murderous, blood-curdling scream screech. We both grabbed our sleeping bags, the dog, and locked ourselves in the truck for the night. That was the longest, scariest night of my life. We couldn't drive out that night because the road into camp was a logging road and dangerous to drive at night. When the sun started coming up a bit after 5 a.m., we packed up camp in about 30 minutes and left the campsite. That encounter has changed me forever. I can't walk in the woods at night. I can't have earphones in during the day outside. I've become hypersensitive to any movement in the woods. I've seen and heard wolves, coyotes, fox, bobcats, and definitely bears. This was not anything listed, especially bears. I moved to the Antlers Atoka area of southeast Oklahoma about four years ago. If you had asked me if I believed in Bigfoot while I was living in the armpit of Arkansas, Pine Bluff, I would have said, nah. A month or two after moving to a 40-acre ranch outside of Antlers, my wife fell asleep on the couch and woke up to what she said was someone jiggling the front doorknob. She jumped up to lock it and said when she turned around, there was a shadow outside the side window of a figure with a big head, long hair, and was gone in a flash. She said she couldn't have imagined it. I blew it off. My son was three at the time, and I got him a battery go-kart, and his mother heard him say, They can't catch me now. When she asked him what he meant, he said, The man who lives in the woods. 
He stands at my window at night and watches me sleep. He can't catch me now. I now have a two-year-old daughter who used to throw fits to be outside until one day she ran inside, slammed the open front door and was crying. I noticed before she goes outside, she will poke her head out the door and look around for a minute before going outside. Rarely will they play in the playhouse that is close to the tree line. About a year ago, I was lying in bed, not yet asleep, and heard a whistle kind of chatter, and I sat up because it sounded like it was coming from near the woods outside my bedroom. My dog started immediately howling, not barking, and wouldn't come off the porch, and usually is very aggressive. She didn't leave the porch that night. I heard the same kind of whistle chatter, but slightly different about three minutes after the first whistle. That really stuck with me. I googled what I could best describe the sound I heard, and Bigfoot kept coming up. Well, November 11th, 2019, my son came running into our bedroom and said, Daddy, there's a bear outside. It has a white face and it was looking at me. I had recently watched Missing 411 and remember a kid describing what I believe was a Bigfoot as a bear that could talk or something like that. I grabbed my rifle and ran outside to where he said he saw it and didn't see anything. Now I'm wondering if my kids have seen something. A few days later, December 3rd, 2019, I recorded a shadow that appeared to be on two feet approaching my house. So far, all my recordings you can just easily blow off. I've heard some whoops on some of my recordings and what sounded like wood knocks and strange behavior from my dogs. This was the first time that I had proof that something was coming up to my house. Shortly after, everything got quiet. TVs were off, all lights were off, and we were going to bed. The night of the video of the shadow, I was watching a live video feed from my phone because the dogs were acting weird. I saw what appeared to be a shadow on two feet approaching the corner of my house. I immediately grabbed my gun. Now, I have three sleeping children. At this time, I have my disabled father next door. It's approximately 11.30 p.m. I don't want to be busting off shots out my front door, but I felt like I needed to try to scare this thing away. As soon as this happened, I shut the door. I called 911, told them I had an intruder in my yard, and requested a deputy. The next morning, I went to the sheriff's office to add a link to the video on YouTube to my report so they would have access to it, and I had a conversation with a couple of the deputies up there. One deputy named Branson followed me outside and said he wanted to talk to me outside for a minute. He said that he knew that they were out there, that they get numerous reports this time of year. A lot of people approach him directly with pictures or footage for him to review because they don't want an official police report or people from their church finding out or to have people contacting them or coming on their land. He gave me his personal number and told me if I had any more problems to contact him directly. I feel comfortable sharing his name and what he said to me because he didn't ask me to keep this just between ourselves. He just didn't want to speak of it in front of the other deputies. I was surprised when he contacted me the next morning at about 8 a.m. He was curious about how my night went if I had any more disturbances and I told him no, that it was a very quiet night. It didn't last. I put up more wireless security cameras. We can hear numerous limbs breaking and sounds of something large pushing through the brush. My main dog came up missing. He was the one that alerted me that they were close. I started up by putting up six game cameras and a bait station. December 25th, at about 9 p.m., I pulled up my camera's live feed. I heard bipedal footsteps running in short bursts, stopping and running again, and I caught a flash of eye shine on the camera so close that I could see the slots of the eyes and I could see the pupils. I grabbed my gun and went outside with a flashlight, but didn't see anything. The next night, on December 26th, at approximately 7 p.m., I turned on my camera to the live feed. I saw a pair of eyes standing next to one of the pine trees in my front yard near my kid's playhouse. Now this is where it's going to get interesting. This is when I realized just how much I underestimated the intelligence and instant reaction these things possess. I grabbed my flashlight and my Kimber 4-5 Crimson. I head outside, shining my light looking for the figure I saw on the camera. I walked between the pine trees and my kid's playhouse, shining my light out into the pasture. I didn't see anything, so I went back inside. About 20 minutes later, I pulled up my camera's live feed and something had put an object in front of my camera. 
I grabbed the flashlight, grabbed the gun, and went back outside. I was standing approximately 15 feet from my kid's playhouse area, shining my light on the playhouse. While keeping my flashlight on the playhouse, I reached down with my right hand to unholster my pistol, cocked the hammer, and proceeded to look around. I didn't see or hear anything yet again. I was reviewing my video footage that was recorded while I was outside after I went back to the house. After looking at it, the camera on the playhouse that picked up the eye shine also picked up a shadow that was cast onto my horse cover by my flashlight. What I didn't realize was, when I was focused on unholstering my pistol and cocking the hammer, this thing was hidden behind my playhouse. It stood up and relocated to another area of the playhouse for more cover in the few seconds that I was looking down at my gun. It saw me looking down at my gun and instantly took advantage of that moment to stand up and move and cross right in front of my flashlight beam, and I never heard it. I went back to review the video of the first time that I went outside, and I could see it cast a shadow the first time. It was a juvenile, and I think I was so focused on looking for a 9-10 to 10 foot Sasquatch that I never saw a small juvenile. Well, the third time, I didn't even bother going outside. I grabbed my AR-15 with a night vision scope, had the wife throw open the front door, and already had my gun pointed at the playhouse area. Through my night vision scope, I could see it standing behind the playhouse, looking at me through the slats in the railing. Right when I pulled the trigger, it darted to the right and was gone. But believe it or not, it actually came back that same night. The next day, December 27th, a total of 19 game cameras were installed around the perimeter, and I upgraded to a total of six wireless security cameras. That night, about seven, one of the game cameras recorded a figure walking behind the playhouse. I started wondering why the focus was on the playhouse. We had a lot of company, my nieces and nephews, on December 23rd and 24th. The focus of their activities was on the playhouse area. I was going through some of my recordings from them, and I had a few videos that were set off by the motion of my horses. I noticed that the horses were moving away at a brisk pace from the tree line. I zoomed in on this area, and in four videos taken on December 24th at 10.30 a.m., I can see two large, adult-sized Sasquatch that are taking turns observing the children from an observation point behind a leaning tree. I had this video footage recorded for four days before I even realized what it was. I believe this to be the mother and father of the juvenile that approached the playhouse on December 25th and 26th. What bothered me about the whole situation was... I was told the majority of the time when they became aware that you're aware of them, they usually move on. They are very persistent. Installing all the game cameras and security cameras only changed how they approach my house. Shooting four shots after the first shadow figure on December 3rd and shooting at a juvenile standing behind my playhouse on December 26th didn't deter them one bit. I became concerned because of their focus on the children. I made a hard decision and took my kids out of school while they were still on Christmas break and relocated them and my wife to her mother's house in Arkansas until I could figure out a solution. When my wife and children were gone for two weeks, the activity began to stop. So I brought the kids back to the house for the weekend. They arrived on a Friday. Saturday night, I was reviewing footage from the day and lo and behold, there he is standing beside the same leaning tree again. This is very disturbing to me because they had to be close enough to my house to hear the children. At this time, my wife and children visit but are still in Arkansas. I installed numerous infrared lights. I've cut back the brush and woods surrounding my house. When my kids are outside, I patrol the tree line with a semi-automatic tactical shotgun loaded with black magic magnum slugs. Our situation is improving, but it is ongoing. Thanks for listening. I think you might find this video of interest as well. If you've had an encounter or sighting of a Sasquatch and would like your story told here, please email me, Lynn Smith, at bigfootcasefiles at mail.com. I'm looking forward to hearing from you.